Um, and as you can see, there's some photos where I'm genuinely having fun. <laughs> <laughs> genuinely. This was on my course. Uh, shout out to Keely for, uh, for coming with me. Um, not sure who was more nervous than me. <laughs> but uh, I genuinely loved it. I had so much fun. And the nerves, of course, they do go away when you get more experience with something. Um, the middle photo I absolutely love. I, I took an 80-year-old lady who was so grateful. Um, and she, we, we obviously had a bit of a moment there where she was so grateful. Um, so if anyone's thinking about going for that tandem rating, I really recommend it. It is possible. Anyone can do it with the right preparation and time, I promise. Next one, F52. How on earth does everyone make head down flying look so easy? <laughs> I'll be honest, um, I'm just going to play a video here showing it was an incredibly frustrating process. As you can see, I'm clearly not in a head down orientation. <laughs> see if this video works, I'll just play this. Um, so, this video oh, might need some technical help. Is anyone better at technology than me? <laughs> Pete, can I borrow you? Pete, why, Pete. Do, why do you think? Oh, Alright, can I borrow you guys to play the video? Thank you. So this video is worth it because it shows I was absolutely terrible. So I had um, a turn as Let's just call it. Every time I tried getting into a head down orientation, I found myself on my back like this. And here is James, who was trying to force me into head down, and I just end up spinning us wildly around, which is uh, not very fun for myself or the coach. And then just yeah, off. this one is meant to be a static turn. This is not a break off. This is me doing a static turn. Believe it or not. <laughs> Disappearing off into the sunset and uh, doing just also a static turn, which clearly is not. Okay, there's just proof that it is really difficult when you get going. Um, obviously, a few things can help. Tunnel, of course, it really helps. It's frustrating hearing that, but when you have to spend a lot of money doing it, but if you spread it out and keep working, you can get there. And it was incredibly frustrating. There were many, many tears. Um, but looking back, it's so important to realise that you have to enjoy the journey because it really is the most rewarding thing ever when it pays off. So that photo at the bottom left is the day I achieved my FFT. You can see that that is probably the biggest win you'll ever see from me. I think it's no secret that I wear my heart on my sleeve. Um, everyone sees tears when I do get a little bit upset about something. However, it is the best feeling in the world when it pays off. And now I'm still on my head down journey. I'm not the best fly in the world. I'm not even remotely average at head down. However, it is getting there and I keep trying and we are definitely making progress. Um, so keep trying. If you stuck at anything, I really recommend that. <laughs> Going on to the female head down record. So I have to give the biggest shout out here to Hannah and Elise. Um, because, if, just on a side note, you, you all should definitely watch back the presentation they did earlier because it was incredibly inspiring um, and they absolutely inspired me to do this weekend. So I'd only recently got my FF2. I did not want to go do this weekend, I have to admit. I was not feeling very confident about it um, and I was very nervous. I was quite happy doing bench groups. However, the really unfortunate thing for me is the British female head down record was currently an 11 way. <laughs> How many people were doing the head down female jumps this year? 11 people. Of course they needed one other person. I picked up a bit of a fuss about doing the record jumps. I didn't want to do it. I was very happy in the bench groups with Martin helping me out a lot and I was not particularly happy, but they came and spoke to me one on one and they really instilled some confidence in me, showing me that belief is so important. It's okay, like I said, to be nervous. If you believe you've done the planning and preparation, you've put time into it, you have to go into it having some confidence. Also, it doesn't matter if these jumps don't work out. It's a really supportive environment where every lady was supporting each other and we were holding each other up. Um, a few jumps, like individual people were making very small errors and it was a completely no blame environment. And it was really inspiring. Um, we 
Like I said, I didn't want to do it, but they convinced me to come along and try it, just telling me that all I have to do is just fly my slot. I don't have to take a grip. But then I get to my slot, which I was actually really surprised about quite smoothly. And then I saw that every 11 other grips were there. So I thought, well, they, they said you don't have to take a grip, but I clearly need to take a grip. At all. Um, unfortunately for me, it was a little bit of a bit of a hard grip. However, it was my first ever dog on a formation, um, which I was very happy about. And um, it, it worked, we got the steel, we got everything we needed to get. And um, a slight takeaway from me, of course, is a learning point, but for my first ever dog, I'm taking that. Um, and with the, the supportive environment, we achieved it, and it was an incredible feeling. Um, definitely a highlight of my career and I was just very lucky that it all happened in the same year as the other things. So lessons I've learned mainly from this year which I think are really important for everyone to take away and um, experienced or not. Achieving stickers, ratings and records in skydiving does take patience, dedication and most importantly belief. Like I've said it's okay to be a little bit nervous about something as long as those nerves don't overtake anything. Just need to keep trying and keep persevering and chipping away because it really does pay off eventually. Everyone learns at a different pace. This is a tough one for me. I'm very guilty of comparing myself to other people, and I know from experience that a lot of my friends are quite similar. Um, however, it's really important to note that everyone does learn at a different pace. It's you learn at your own speed. You should not be comparing yourself to others. It is an individual journey, and as long as you are achieving and being successful for what you believe to be successful, then who cares what your friends and close ones are doing? If anything, we should all be supporting each other to achieve these things together, because the best jumps are when we're all jumping together and having fun at the end of the day, right? And if someone's a bit rubbish on a jump, we can all laugh about it. Trust me, I've been there. <laughs> it's all good. And finally, like I said, it's not all about achievements. Skydiving should be about fun. Like, we clearly love what we do. Here we are all today. It's an incredible thing that we do. Like in that first quote, every time we jump out of the plane, we're doing something amazing. So what if it's not perfect? It really should just be about jumping with friends, making these connections, and having a great time. Because after all, it really is the best thing in the world. And there's a quote as a song I